Talking about the covenant keeping God. Can you say that together? The covenant. Say it one more time. The covenant. It's an old song we used to sing about the covenant keeping God. I would like to read from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 to 20, and then we take it from there. Father, we ask that you just breathe upon us this morning as we go into your word. In Jesus' name. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one, by no greater he swear by himself, saying, surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, an oath for confirmation is of them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Verse 20. Whither the foreigner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Bible says when God made this covenant with Abraham, God swore by himself. You know when you make an agreement or a covenant, there's always a higher authority that will hold both of you accountable. Amen? You, you, you can, like traditionally, they will say you are going to make this covenant before Ogun. Ogun in Yoruba land is what? The God of Ion, which means if you fail, that God will just come and kill you or something. You go to a higher authority than yourself. But God is the most high God. Who is he going to call to sign? A covenant is an, a document signed in blood. Who is going to, that's a blood covenant, is an, is an agreement signed in blood. Who is God going to call to hold him accountable? So God said, listen, there's nobody bigger than me, Abraham. I'm swearing by myself that if I fail to keep my promise to you, that's a big thing. Technically speaking, God was saying, Abraham, I will destroy myself if I fail you. No bank, no human being can promise you that. Only God can promise you that. God is saying to you by an oath, I'm swearing I will not fail you. Is there an amen in this house? Amen. The blood covenant in Christ is secured by the life of the guarantor who is infallible and the covenant cannot be broken. The blood covenant in Christ is secured by the life of the guarantor who is infallible, therefore the covenant cannot be broken. Hebrews 7.22 says, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament or covenant. That, another word for surety is guarantor. By so much was Jesus made a guarantor. May God not allow you to guarantee something that will put you in trouble. You know, sometimes they will say, who is the guarantor? Who is the... Who is the shorty? You know, sometimes somebody has a problem, maybe in the police station, they say, we need shorty. Have we? Who will shorty the person? You say, okay, it's my neighbor, let me shorty him. Then the, the person that they arrested runs away. Who are they going to hold? I say, who will they hold? They will come for the shorty. Or the person you shortied, according to our English, has disappeared. And so whatever you use to shorty the person, you lose it. But Jesus is the surety of this covenant. The agreement actually is between Jesus and God in our behalf. Hallelujah. And you see, in Galatians 3.16, the Bible says, if you can turn there, Galatians 3.16, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say unto seeds, meaning many people, but unto your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. So when God was talking to Abraham, God was looking beyond this time. And God was looking beyond Abraham. The Bible says the promise was made to his seed. And that seed 
is Christ. So in the mind of God, when he was cutting that covenant with Abraham, he was also looking at Christ who was supposed to come. That Christ will fulfill this. This agreement is between God and Jesus Christ through Abraham. I want to say to you that God knows the end from the beginning. In the garden, God already introduced the word seed. He said, the seed of this woman shall bruise your head. He was telling the devil, I have a plan bigger than what you are looking at right now. You think man has fallen, but through this same man, I will bring a seed through a woman that will bruise your head. Revelation 13 a says that Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. My dear friend, I'm here to say to you this morning, that God loves you so much he cut the covenant with Jesus so that even when we fail there can be somebody who will stand between us and God Jesus is not just the covenant partner with God in our behalf he's also the substitute he's also the cause bearer everything that that the enemy planned against us, Jesus absorbed on the cross of Calvary. Why is God doing this? It's because he loves you so much. He wants to make sure nothing can stand between you and him. Am I talking to people in the house of God? So God made an agreement with Jesus in the mind of God. The Bible says he remembers our frame. He remembers that we are dust. God is so much in love with man When man sinned in the Garden of Eden, it broke the heart of God. God said, what has happened to my man? What has happened to the God man I put on the earth? The enemy has brought something between us. But I will take away this man's sin. I will take away this man's reproach. I will be connected with him in a way that nothing can separate us. Everything God was doing is to connect with you and I. I want to say to you, God is a God of mercy this morning. I want to say to somebody that God is a God of love this morning. He's not looking for how to destroy you. He's looking looking for how to raise you up. He's not looking for how you are going to fail. He's looking for how he's going to keep you going higher and higher. And I want to say to you, child of God, heaven is desperate. Heaven is desperate that you will live for God. Heaven is desperate that you will succeed in life. So he made an agreement with Jesus so that even if you fail, Jesus can step in there and say, that's my brother. That's my covenant partner. God, you got to help him. I gave my life. I am the guarantor of this covenant. I know they made some mistakes mistakes but I'm standing here to say it is well I bore it on the cross I'm here to announce to a child of God that the promises of God for your life cannot fail even when you fail the Bible says when we are faithless he remains faithful he cannot deny himself have you been faithless before yes I have been faithless before but the Bible says when you are faithless when your faith is developing K-leg, Jesus says I will carry you when you don't know what to do Jesus said there's an agreement I have given my life what would I give for you you. I want to say to a child of God today, your story is not over. You will not finish like the rest of them because there's somebody in heaven that is standing for you. Heaven is rooting for you. Precisely 1989, I had some challenges in ministry. Somebody sent me a prophecy. You are going to die. A big man of God. You know when you are new, you will shake small. Say, I have been anointed to cause you. People that are anointed to cause have a problem. I'm not anointed to cause, I'm anointed to bless. He <laughs> said, You are going to die. The person who brought me the prophecy has died, but I'm still here. So Tina can remember. I went before the Lord in prayer because the man said, I have been anointed. He mentioned one powerful man of God. He said, you are going to die. You have to come and lie down in my front. I said, for what? He said, just come and lie down. If you don't lie down, you will die. He even gave me time that I will die. 1989, I never die. Heaven is a good place. And in that vision, I was suddenly caught to heaven. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. It was like a stadium, big stadium. As I entered the stadium in the vision, when I entered the stadium, everybody in that stadium knew my name. 
I've never met them before. Who are the people in the stadium? All the Christians who have died and gone to heaven. I didn't know I have many people that like me like that. And what were they telling me? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The people in that stadium, I couldn't count them. The fans there, look. The people, you know, you know the way they will be doing? Everybody was calling my name. There was nobody on the pitch. It was only me that entered. Ordinary me. There, I couldn't see any other person on that. It was just me. Just me, oh. Just me, oh. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I said, ah. So people in heaven, they are connected to us here. Why would they be saying I should not give up? I don't even know why I'm telling you this story. You don't tell it. Why would they be saying don't give up? Because your life is connected to Christ. You have an agreement with Jesus Christ. Jesus has died for you. You are valuable. I say you are valuable this morning. They were all calling my name. They were all call- I said, ah, how did they, all these people know my name? When I came to myself and came back from that thing, the voice of the Lord said, go and encourage other people. I want to say to you this morning, because there's an agreement between God and Jesus in your behalf, heaven is cheering you on this morning. I said, heaven is cheering you up this morning. It doesn't matter how much is in your bank account. It doesn't matter who is talking ill about you. It doesn't matter who does not like you. It doesn't matter who says you are going to die. It doesn't matter what the doctor said. You are a child of God. There's a covenant in your name. God and Jesus have agreed that you shall live and not die. God and Jesus, they have agreed that you are only climbing higher and higher. God and Jesus have agreed that in the time of famine you shall laugh. God and Jesus have agreed that you are going to that wealthy place. Is there somebody who believes the word of the Lord this morning? The covenant is infallible because your guarantor is infallible. Jesus guaranteed it and said, even with my own life, I have paid. So is it a healing? It's guaranteed because the person that paid is alive. If your guarantor dies, you have a problem. So the man that guarantees you will have to take his property. This Jesus that guaranteed this covenant is alive forevermore. Can I get an amen in the house of God? Wow. Where has the time gone? Praise God. All right, let's try and move on a bit. Amen. Covenant people experience victory by the arm of the Lord. Covenant people experience victory by the arm of the Lord. First thing I said is that the blood covenant is secured by the life of the guarantor. And cannot be broken because Jesus is infallible. The blood covenant is secured by the life of the guarantor and cannot be broken because Jesus is infallible. Covenant people experience victory by the arm of the Lord. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 8. Let's go to Psalm 44, verse 1 to 8. I said you will experience victory by the arm of the Lord. Psalm 44, verse 1 to 8. Covenant people experience victory by the arm of the Lord. Blood covenant is secured by the life of the guarantor and cannot be broken because Jesus is infallible. Psalm 44, verse 1. To the chief musician for the sons of Korah, Machile, Machil, we have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days, in the times of old. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thine hand, and plantest them, how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. Verse 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arms save them. But by thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God, command deliverances for Jacob. Through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thy name we will tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved me from our enemies, and hast put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all the day long, and praise thy name forever, Selah. The Bible says right here that the land they got, they didn't get by their own sword. I want to say to you this morning that there's an invisible hand behind your hand. 
There's an invisible hand behind your finances. There's an invisible hand behind your family. There's a hand of covenant-keeping God who is endless, ageless, limitless, and all-powerful behind every covenant believer. There's something about you that you don't understand. When they say you are a NATO ally, it means that when somebody touches you, they touch NATO. Amen. God says there's a covenant between you and I. I'm standing behind you. When David fought Goliath, David said, This uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. He said, Your servant fought the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine, in 1 Samuel 17, 36, this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. I want to say that covenant has given you an alliance with Almighty God. I've told you this story when I was in primary school. I was one of those small boys in primary school, you know, tiny little people. And everybody likes to oppress you. Your biscuit that you bring from home, the bigger children in your class. You know there are always bigger children in your class, either by age or by size. How many of you understand what I'm saying? When you are eating your biscuit, you say, bring it! If you don't, bah! I slap you. Your biscuit always gets taken by those big boys. It's called bullying. But suddenly a boy appeared in our school. Can't remember his name very well now. But he appeared suddenly. And I remember that he's the one that even came to me and said, um, either his uncle or his, his guardian told him that there's one boy from our hometown in this class. So he looked for me. This guy is big. He's bigger than everybody in the class. Very big, muscular, and he was very a good sportsman. So all the girls liked him. You know, guys, girls like success. So they say, the girl can run, the girl can run. So the guy dealt with our bully. He dealt with the bully of the class. So me and the guy became very close. I formed an alliance with him. <laughs> we had an agreement. No, he, he doesn't take my biscuit to except I give him. You know, I'm like his junior brother. So he will just, me and him, we'll be working together. All those people that take biscuits and chin chin from people, when they see him near me, they will just greet me. Hey, how are you today? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Why? The guy is behind me. He's beside me. We work together. We work together. Very big muscular guy. In fact, probably wasn't that big, but to me it was like a giant. Very, you know, these kind of people that... Everything bicep, everything strong, muscular. Even with the short knicker we used to wear, you see the muscles at the back of his leg. Very big muscles, guys. Even the muscles alone will tell you that don't, don't go around this guy. This guy will destroy you. This guy is walking. I just like staying around during break time. Once we do break like this, I look for him because <laughs> I have to eat my biscuits. <laughs> he was the invisible hand around me. My friend, the reason you are sitting here today is not because you are smarter than other people. It's not because you are better than other people. The devil wanted to finish you and eat you for lunch. But there was an invisible hand behind you. There was somebody walking around you. There was somebody that was saying, that's my child. There was somebody that was saying, you cannot touch that one. You can do to other people, but touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. A thousand will fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand side. But they will never, 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 never come near you. Only with your eyes will you see and behold the reward of the wicked. And with long life, my son, will he satisfy you and you will see his salvation. You will live long on the face of the earth. Every organ in your body, by reason of the anointing that I carry, is functioning well. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said you will go from strength to strength as those that come to Zion in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you this morning that the battle is not over until you win a thousand men fall by your side affliction shall not arise a second time in the name of Jesus give him praise and glory in the house of God somebody give him praise and glory in the house of God 
Nigeria is here today because of the invisible hand of the Almighty. And because we are here, Nigeria will survive. I say Nigeria will survive. Nigeria will survive. Nigeria will survive. Is there a believer in the house of God? Glory to God. My Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. I feel something in this place this morning. I feel something in the air this morning. I feel an anointing, a yoke-breaking anointing. They said it killed somebody in your family. It's not going to kill you. Liver problem is not going to kill you. Kidney problem is not going to kill you. You will live and not die. You will fulfill destiny because of the mighty hand of God that is behind you. There's a covenant keeping God. His eyes are upon the righteous. His eyes are running to and fro to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose right heart is upright towards him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 